first portion of this film will demonstrate how to disassemble the ward container for loading on the transport vehicle. The second portion of the film will demonstrate how to load the ward container on the transport vehicle using the equipment provided in the shelter loading kit. To prepare the ward container for transport, the assembly procedure must be done in reverse. Four men can accomplish this efficiently. First, remove the corner posts. Release the latches, securing the upper and lower fabric enclosures to both ends of the container. Starting from the left end of the container, separate the upper and lower fabric enclosures by releasing the zipper attachment from left to right. Disengage the lower fabric from both ends of the container. Remove the fabric by sliding the bead on the fabric from left to right in the tract in the folding floor. Fold the fabric for transport. Remove the upper fabric from the tract and the folding roof in the same manner. Fold the fabric for transport. Raise the folding floor into position and secure the latches at both ends of the container. Remove the retaining pins from the folding roof support brackets. Lower the folding roof and secure the latches at both ends of the container. Using the ratchet end of the wrench, lower the container with the four jack supporting it until it rests firmly on the ground. Raise the leveling jacks and secure them to the container. Be sure that all of the wrenches are attached to the fittings on the jacks when the procedure is completed. The equipment necessary for loading the ward container is the tailgate roller assembly with locking pin, the front anchor posts, the grip hoists, the grip hoist jack handles. Two tie-down straps are required to secure the container during transport. And the nylon strap. A five-man team, consisting of a non-commissioned officer and four team members, can efficiently load the ward container in a relatively short time. Align the truck with the container. One team member stands at the rear of the container and guides the truck into position as the non-commissioned officer in charge directs the driver who remains at the controls during the entire loading procedure. When the truck is in position, install the tailgate roller assembly and front anchor posts. Join the roller assembly with the roller locking pin. Install the front anchor posts. 
they must be securely fastened to the truck bed with the clamps on the posts. The posts must be positioned so the eye is pointed out. Attach the grip hoists to the anchor posts so the fittings for the jack handles are facing out. Lock the grip hoist hooks in place. Release the clutch on both grip hoists before attaching the cables. Remove the grip hoist cables from the reels. Insert the cables through the grip hoists. Extend the cables to their full length to the front of the vehicle so they are not in the path of the wheels. Attach the grip hoist cables to the two tow cable fittings on the container. Position each cable over the roller assembly on each side of the truck bed. Engage the clutch on both grip hoists. Attach the jack handles to the grip hoists. Take up the slack in the cables. The non-commissioned officer in charge coordinates the team's action during the entire loading procedure. The teams operating the grip hoists must work in unison, so the container is moved forward slowly and evenly. Be sure that the cables roll smoothly over the roller assembly. Working together, move the container forward. Until the skids on the base of the container are resting on the roller assembly. Make sure that the container is properly aligned with the truck bed. Continue to move the container forward over the end of the truck bed. The non-commissioned officer in charge carefully directs the loading procedure as the container reaches the center point and settles on the truck bed. Move the container forward slowly until it rests firmly in position. Remove the jack handles from the grip hoists. Disengage the hoist clutches. Detach the cables from the container. To complete the loading procedure, position the nylon strap around the back end of the container and attach it to the hoist cables. Engage the hoist clutch and take up the slack in the hoist cables. Attach the jack handles to the grip hoists and continue the loading operation. Working slowly, 
Move the container into transport position with the nylon strap. The non-commissioned officer in charge directs the team's action during the entire loading procedure. As the container nears the cab, the non-commissioned officer in charge steps out of the truck bed onto the running board to direct final positioning for transport. Remove the tailgate roller assembly. Close and secure the tailgate. Remove the jack handles from the grip hoists. Unhook the nylon strap from the hoist cables. Disengage the hoist clutches and remove the cables from the grip hoists. Coil the cables on the reels for storage. Remove the grip hoists from the anchor posts. The anchor posts are left in position during transport. They are removed and stored after the container is unloaded. Place the equipment next to the metal chests for packing. During transport, the container must be secured to the truck with sufficient tie-downs to prevent shifting or movement. Run one tie-down through the rings on the rear of the container. Attach each end of the strap to the tie-down rings on both sides of the truck. Tighten the strap with the latching device. Secure the loose end of the tie-down. Run the other tie-down through the two rings on the front end of the container. Attach the ends of the tie-down to the rings on the truck. Tighten the tie-down with the latching device. Secure the loose end of the tie-down. The tie-downs should be positioned in this manner for transport. All of the equipment should be packed in the metal chests provided as soon as the loading procedure is completed. The kit is transported by the supply vehicle or any vehicle in the convoy with available space. The must ward container is ready for transport to the next hospital site.